hello everybody once again and uh, welcome to the NPTEL online certification course on CMOS digital VLSI design. We have uh, till now understood the basic, the previous module we had understood logical effort and the way logical effort helps us to find out the delay in a combinational logical block. Uh, now we will be starting with sequential uh, logic design, uh, it is a new section or a new chapter you can say and we have finished with combinational logical block and we will be starting with sequential logical block and sequential logic design uh, as far as this module is concerned. Uh, so, this module will be primarily focusing on the basic concepts of sequential logic design and uh, within that uh, within the next within this module we will be actually seeing the following things the outline of the whole module is something like this. So, we will introduce to you what is basically a uh, sequential logic right and how is it different from the combinational logic and uh, where we will be using sequential and where we will be using combinational logical blocks. Now, uh, unlike combinational in sequential uh, circuits uh, timing issues are very very critical and uh, one has to be quite cautious about uh, the timing analysis or the timing of the data with respect to clock or with respect to each other. So, we will be understanding various timing matrix uh, of the sequential logic or the sequential circuits uh, so that these sequential circuits work properly and there are no violations as far as data is concerned. That means, you are able to properly feed the data, uh, process the data and take the data out in the output uh, in the output part uh, without compromising on the on the on the quality of the uh, circuit itself. Uh, subsequently, we will be looking into uh, sequential circuits as memory elements I will explain to you how does it work out and then uh, we will go for static latches and registers. So, uh, how, what is the difference between shift registers with registers and static latches within which we will be covering the bistability principle. Uh, we will be also looking at mux based latches and then we will look at master slave edge triggered uh, uh, registers and uh, low voltage static latches right. So, we will therefore, see the difference between latches and registers and we will be also concentrating on the fact that uh, how latches and registers are different from each other in terms of its operating conditions and so on and so forth. Uh, before that, we will actually go for bistability. That means, understand the basic concept of uh, memory location and what is the concept of bistability as far as memory is concerned. So, let me start uh, 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 the basic fundamental principles of sequential logic. And uh, as we have seen that if you look very closely combinational uh, logic circuits are just the function of your inputs at that instant of time. Right. So, which means that I have a combination for example, an AND gate right. If you look at an AND gate then you will you will appreciate that in the AND gate uh, you will so for example, you have an AND gate right A and B are there. So, you the, what is the truth table all of you are aware of that Y will be uh, so A B C. So, uh, so if, if I draw the truth table I get uh, uh, right. So, this is the truth table which you get for an AND gate which means that once your input pattern is fixed at a equals to b a equals to b equals to 0 output has to be 0. Similarly, if any one of these two conditions uh, three conditions are met output will be always equals to 0, uh, but when the input conditions are 1 1 output will be equals to also equals to 1. Which means that at no point of time the value of the output depends on the inputs of the previous time right. So, say at t equals to 0 you had t equals to 0 then I say t equals to 1 and suppose that so t equals to 0 suppose a and b were both equals to 0 and this a equals to b both are equals to 1. So, that t equals to 0 y will be equals to 0 at t equals to 1 y will be equals to 1. So, what does it tell me that these two are totally different state available to you right. So, they are totally different states and they have distinct states available to you at t equals to 0 and t equals to 1. And for calculating the value of y at t equals to 1, you actually do not require any information of the output voltage or current anything at t equals to 0. So, they are totally they are independent states independent states right independent states and not only they are independent states, 
but they are actually uh, in a sense uh, they, they do not influence each other also right. So, so that is what I wanted to say for a combination logic, but for a sequential logic right uh, for a sequential logic as I discussed here uh, the output or the current value of the inputs also on the preceding value of the input. So, the output uh, this, the uh, for a not only depends upon the current sequence of inputs or current values of inputs, but it also depends upon the previous values of inputs uh, available to you right. So, even if you do not understand any part of it as just as a layman you can understand that since the current value of voltage or the output depends on the previous value. So, you do have a concept of memory here because you the system is able to memorize or at least stuck to its value by inputs which are available to it in the previous cycle. So, anything like that is sort of a memory because it is storing something for some period of time to evaluate the result right. So, all your sequential elements are uh, memory design basically part of memory only whereas, combinational logical blocks are not memory they are instantaneous in nature depending upon the value of input at that particular instant. So, that is what I was saying in the second point that it has memory right and it has memory. Now, if you look at uh, the basic block if you forget about say you forget about this this part this part you forget about the lower part right lower part then you see you put an input you get an output there is no feedback loop then we define this to be a combination logic block right. This has been going on so for example, AND gate OR gate NOR gate ZOR gate any of the standard gates which you use uh, will follow this type of logic where in given input you get an output here and this happens to be the core combination logical block which is available to you. But now we are what we are doing in a sequential logic is we are feeding the previous state back through a register or some some element back into the input right back as an input. So, these are so these are basically the current states you do an evaluation of the combination logical block I come to the next state and the next state then enters the register yeah, this something happens here feeds it here and so there is a there is a loop system available to you right. So, this is basically a uh, FSM uh, basic is a FSM block which you see. So, this is basically FSM block which you see finite state machine block right and they will generate you various FSM uh, modules across the network right. Now, as I discussed with you therefore, that unlike combinational therefore, sequential will always have some amount of uh, sort of a memory element available to it. Why? Because if you look very carefully the, 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 the data is basically making a loop across this network which means that at t equals to 0 suppose I had output then even at t equals to 1 uh, this output of this will be treated as an input to the second stage right and therefore, uh, it will be even it will retain certain values. So, therefore, the output in the second stage will not only depend upon the input of that second stage, but also upon the previous state output right. So, that is quite interesting uh, way of looking at it. Uh, so, let us look at the timing matrix. So, so with this knowledge where you have gained till now that 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 a combinational logical block is primarily a logical block wherein your inputs are in total consonance with the output whereas, in the sequential logical block you your outputs not only depend upon the input of the present state, but also upon the input of the previous state right and that is the reason uh, you have to hold. Now, you see therefore, why timing is very very important in sequential is that till a time. So, so, so your output has to be held till a time that your next input is actually coming to the combinational logical block. Otherwise, the combinational block will not understand from where the input is coming. Is it coming from the sequential? Is it coming from the register, or is it coming from the directly from the input? Right. So, what will what will happen to do is that you have to wait till one loop of your output actually reaches the combinational block. Right. And therefore, your 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 these are these are these are quite essential or quite important. Uh, uh, observations as well as sequential logic is concerned right and you have to be very cautious in terms of observing uh, why and how the timing diagram will affect uh, the overall thing. There are certain definitions of timing for sequential circuits uh, which you should be uh, aware of before we move forward in this design and these are basically simple uh, uh, definitions which you should not only remember, but understand why it is coming. The first is the the first timing is basically the setup time right setup setup time and also referred to as 
T uh, suffix SU, right. Now, let us suppose I have what I, I will define certain terms here which will be quite interesting that there are two types of uh, clocks uh, which is available. Uh, suppose I have a data coming, right. I define a clock which is basically a positive edge triggered design, right. Let us suppose I define what is known as a positive edge triggered. It, it, it basically means that when the clock is rising at the positive edge which is this one, right. This is the falling edge again rising again and falling. So, clock is going on. During the rising edge of the clock, the system, the system is able to accept accept data. When? When the clock is rising, then we define that to be as a positive edge triggered design or a positive edge triggered clock. Is it okay? That means, when my clock is rising, you are accepting the data from the out from the input and you are doing something. You can also have a negative edge triggered clock. So, I, this is positive edge triggered clock you can also have a negative edge triggered clock, which again as the name suggests in the negative cycle when the clock is falling down at that point of time if, we, if the data is sampled we define that to be as the negative edge triggered clock. So, when I say a positive edge triggered or a negative edge triggered I mean to say that when the clock is either rising or falling your data will be synchronous with the clock itself. right? You can also have a level triggered clock, which, which what does it mean? Level triggered basically means that you will have this. So, when the level is 0 or the level is 1. So, when the level is 1, then it is sampling let us suppose the data, then we define it to be as a positive level triggered level triggered design. So, I have a level triggered design or level triggered level triggered clock, right. I can also have a when, when 0 is, uh, is there, it is actually accepting data or 1 is there it is accepting data. So, this is a positive level triggered, this is a negative level triggered. This is 0 to 1 transition if the clock is doing, I define that to be as a positive edge triggered. If it is 1 to 0 clock is doing, then we define that to be as a negative edge triggered design. Fine, 1 to 0 and 0 to 1 you will, you, you will see, right. And therefore, these are the very, very important issues which you should be carefully uh, noted down. Now, the setup time is defined as that time when the data input must be valid before the clock transition. So, I will just give you a brief idea what I am trying to say. Let us suppose I have a clock here, right? I have a clock here and I have a data input D here. So, D will go from 0 to 1, right? 0 to, so 0 to 1 transition. What it tells me is that, that just when you have a clock edge available to you, your data should remain at 1, right, at least a minimum few some units before your rising edge of the clock. Your data should remain stable, right, it, which means that between this point and this point, this point is basically known as T setup therefore, between these two points the data cannot go from 0 to 1 and then from 1 to 0 and then again 0 to 1 and then from 1 to 0, no. Once it reaches this region, the data should be stable at 1 or 0 whatever what, whatever the value is right uh, for a positive edge triggered. For you, got, you got the point. So, for a positive edge triggered this is what you see uh, for a negative edge triggered it will be something somewhere here right. So, for a negative edge triggered this is the point where you should trigger it, but my data should be stable at least till point this this point uh, this point fine. So, for a positive edge triggered my setup time is basically the minimum time before the rising edge of the clock when my data needs to be stable and negative edge triggered clock is basically the setup time before the negative edge triggered when the clock is basically equals to, to uh, goes and the data data is is, is accepted. Uh, so, 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 this is what, what we define as a setup time uh, issues. Now, we can also have dual edge triggered I will not discuss that in details, but dual edge triggered means you are you are sampling at positive as well as negative. So, if you want to increase the data rates you can make it dual edge trigger, but then at each point you have to maintain certain things uh, which you should be very careful about right. So, so just to give you uh, just sorry. So, just to give you a brief idea about what I was talking about I discussed with you just now the setup time right. 
Now, let me discuss with you what is known as a hold time. When my clock is going from 0 to 1 or the rising edge of the clock, my data should remain stable to either 1 or 0 at least some time, min, some minimum time before the rising edge of the clock. That is defined as setup time, fine. What is hold time? Just the reverse. That means, after the clock has passed, you require to hold the data till some, um, some amount of time, so that the subsequent stage is able to accept the data and your, 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 your output is basically uh, latched to a particular value or affixed to a particular value, right. So, we define hold time as the data input which must remain valid after the clock edge. So, setup time is just before the clock edge when your data should be stable and hold time is basically the data input after the clock edge when your data should be stable, fine. So, these are the two very important definitions as far as setup time and hold time uh, issues are concerned in a mixed signal design. Now, we define a clock period as capital T which means that this is the time uh, maximum time of a sequential circuit or uh, which it operates such that it allows for the longest delay of any stage in the network which means that I uh, will just show you uh, give you a hint let us suppose let us suppose I have this network right and I have this network this is my D and this is my Q. So, D is the data input and Q is the output right. So, what there is a single path which goes like this there are multiple paths from here I can go like this and then I have multiple paths which is coming like this and then it comes like this and so on and so forth. So, obviously, if anything is not done this path will have the maximum delay as compared to even these two straight line paths. I suppose it is clear for a simple logical block for a simple sequential logical block these two paths will have minimum delay as compared to these three paths available to you right. Therefore, we define the time at which the sequential circuit operates must thus accommodate the longest delay of any stage which means that uh, the longest delay between point A and point B should be part and parcel of the clock period right and that is very very important. Uh, TP logic the worst case propagation delay of the logic. So, for example, if you have an adder or if you have a simple even a NAND gate CMOS bit NAND gate it will have some intrinsic delay right. So, I am trying to tell you that you should have the worst in propagation delay available to you as far as designing is concerned. Uh, there is certain delay known as contamination delay which is TCD and this is the minimum delay at which you will start getting the output available to you right. So, TCD is the minimum delay available to you. TP logic is the worst propagation delay which you feel between two points. Clock period is between two clocks the amount of time taken to ensure that the longest delay of any stage appears on the network. Hold time is the time after the clock palace passed which the data should be able to sample and hold the data. What is setup time? Setup time is the time just before the rising edge of the clock uh, when you require to uh, set up the data and therefore, you require a certain amount of in, uh, initial time to do that right. So, these are the few important uh, uh, like definitions which you should be aware of and you should be aware of therefore, the various sequences which are there and various issues which are there right. So, that whatever I told you just now has been shown here pictorially in this in this profile and is, as you can see the clock is going. So, when the clock is high D and Q are high right and the clock goes low nothing happens because you are not anyway uh, you are not anyway doing any latching uh, and it comes to this point. So, this is the rising edge. So, this is the rising edge of the next clock right rising edge of the next clock. So, uh, the idea is that uh, one should be much ahead of the rising edge of the uh, uh, clock. And so, what I am trying to tell you is that the when the clock therefore, goes high right it remains T setup. So, this is the time till which the setup unit holds its value and this is basically my T setup this value is T setup fine. I think it is clear to all of you that T setup therefore, is the minimum time right before the rising edge of the clock. So, that is the reason the clock has been taken here. So, there is a rising edge available here anything before than this which is on this side right and your gate is not able to understand uh, what delay is basically known as a T setup delay right. After the gate has actually evaluated it then comes the T hold. So, T hold will also be coming into the into the picture right. So, the T hold is basically the when the clock has passed the amount of time taken for the circuit again to stabilize basically the whole time circuitry right. And uh, so, so you as you can see here 
you have with the rising edge of the clock your data is stable here and therefore, data is equals to 1 which you see here. So, data is equals to 1 even before that it holds one data here as it reaches the, the falling edge of the clock the output voltage starts to fall down here right it falls it falls down here. So, if I do a rising I will get a rising uh, a rising value of voltage at, at, at these, these, these points right. So, data is stable at this and at this data is quite stable right and that is quite interesting as far as this design is concerned. Now, uh, so we have understood therefore, what is the la what is the register and how does it work we will just take up maybe one transmission gate based uh, TG to explain to you how it works in a transistor format. And the memory is if you remember uh, that is embedded into logic uh, with logic in the foreground. So, logic is in the foreground memory is in the background and is considered to be one of the most robust design techniques for any digital or analog system design. Uh, however, uh, however uh, you remember you, you are doing a static memory and uh, static design and dynamic design what was in static design you use simple CMOS transistors in the pull up and pull down with a capacitive loading and you told told that uh, well this is the combinational uh, combinational sequence combinational sequential logic primarily meaning that this is basically a logic which is sequential in nature I can solve it and you can you did it possibly in that that domain and you, you will be able to do this one. But generally when you talk about uh, when you talk about design memory is always uh, at the back side. So, the front end is not obviously memory the back end is basically the memory which which is there right and therefore, what was happening was a large amount of money was required for centralizing your memory right. But then if you centralize memory you do not actually open up information and so what people are trying to do is that can we have a memory can we have a memory which does computation, but then I ensure that it is in such a state that I am not able to uh, or any one of us is not able to uh, steal the information or change it. So, therefore, memory is basically the background the foreground and basically the overall system dynamics. Uh, what, what is the difference between the system what is the system static and dynamic memory where static memory preserves the state as long as the power is turned on and therefore, when the power is turned off the all the memory is washed away in a static memory right uh, they are generally built using positive feedback or regeneration very straightforward and simple and but dynamic memory what is the problem is uh, they store the data but very for a very very short period of time right perhaps millisecond is what I, I gather but they may be much smaller than that right. So, for a typical dynamic memory you will get a reduced value of your uh, uh, of your uh, period of time in which you can evaluate the whole thing right. So, this is the classification of memory right and then uh, let me see what is the difference between latch and a resistor well I have already discussed with you a latch is a level sensitive circuit. So, whenever level sensitive basically means this is level sensitive and edge means this is edge right. So, level sensitive circuit that passes the input to the output when the clock signal is high very straightforward. So, when the clock signal is high it passes input to the ground uh, input to the output right and then in that state the latch is said to be transparent mode right is known as transparent mode. Contrary therefore, level sensitive latches you have also edge triggered signals or registers also which actually latch. So, if you look at this positive latch here when when clock is high right. So, this was your input right input was varying whatever varying was taking place at g equals to clock. So, the g was given as clock and q was output here. So, the, so, so you see just be just at the rising edge of the clock right out is out is stable right out is stable, but then out has got no large amount of setup time available to it or sorry hold time available to it right and therefore, you see this 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 follows uh, out and this follow out in this case out follows in directly right and when the clock goes. So, this is basically edge triggered. So, in the positive edge triggered of the clock something happened here in the latch yes, this is sorry sorry this is a latch. So, when the it is level triggered. So, whenever you have got output equals to this much you should be able to handle the total uh, amount of logic here right and so on and so forth. Let us look at the negative latch negative latch is again same concept only thing is clock here is negative edge triggered and therefore, in the falling edge of the clock uh, you are able to sustain the output information available to you right. Uh, whereas, in this case you can sustain it at the very first edge of the clock 
uh, forgetting the values of the output. So, as I discussed with you therefore, edge triggered registers, registers only sample the input on the clock transition from 0 to 1 for a positive edge triggered register and 1 to 0 for a negative edge triggered register. Right? So, I am clear I hope uh, that we are trying to do is basically move the things together on the same profile or the same net. Right? Next we compare uh, our static latches and registers right? and we define to you a bistability principle. Uh, which which uh, which uh, possibly uh, I will discuss maybe in the next turn when we come back to you and explain to you the bistability principle and register signals in this lecture. Okay, thank you very much.